You are now checked in to Stand Up New York Labs. Oh, yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, we want to thank you for coming down here tonight to the Comedy Cellar at the Village Underground for Rice Wars with Tort Master Sharon Small. And now, we ask you to put your hands together, stop your feet, make some noise for the one and only Yes! Oh, you gotta get louder than that crowd. This is a fucking show. Clap it up, sir. Clap your hands, sir. Clap it. I can see you. Clap your hands, sir. Are you clapping? Good. It's not TV. I can fucking see you, motherfuckers. Black man. Black man. Black man. I'll see you at the meeting on Wednesday, black man. <laughs> some of y'all laugh, some of y'all are like, what meeting? Do you have meetings? Are you happy to be here? Say yes. Yeah. Ready to have some fun? Say yes. Yeah. Let's see where everybody's from. Who's New Yorkers? Any New Yorkers in the house? <laughs> Got a handful of people. Big man up top. Where you from, man? Brooklyn. All right, nice. I can felt the anger out of that fucking... <laughs> I'm from Brooklyn too. Brooklyn's not how it used to be, is it? A lot of white people. White people, it looked like a fucking, the L train looked like a ski lift. It's like, am I going skiing? The fucking white people, I did. I remember Brooklyn was blacker than black. Brooklyn was so black, even Africans came to Brooklyn like, what the fuck? No, no. Too many black people. I go back to Zimbabwe. <laughs> if you're not laughing, buy a globe. It's funny. <laughs> buy a fucking globe. Time to grow up. Who you here with, man? Friends? What's going on over there? Brother and friend. Brother and friend? Who's the oldest brother? You older than this dude? Twins? Twins? <laughs> Shut up, drunk girl. Look at that. <laughs> drunk girl, holy shit. The sluts are awake, am I right? Did I shame her? I didn't slut shame her, did I? <laughs> twins. Are you a single girl who yelled? We are twins. And she's fucking like, oh. Okay, first of all, how is your microphone louder than mine? First. That's the first thing. Let's address that shit. How is your microphone? Who's your fucking manager? Well, my manager just got out June. <laughs> I can say it, I'm Jewish. <laughs> Twin girls? Holy fucking beer commercial. And who slept with what? She slept with three people, what'd you say? Married. She's, she's not. You're married, one twin is married, one twin is not married. Yeah. <laughs> I'm gonna fuck that girl today. Yeah, I'm gonna fuck her. Thank you, crowd. You guys are the best wingman I've ever had in my life. Thanks, Goose. I owe you one, Goose. <laughs> Fucking girls. But they got the vagina, so checkmate. It's vagina! Vagina is the strongest thing in the universe. Girls, don't clap. I don't need you to rub it in my face. Wait, I'm sorry. Rub it in my face. <laughs> Thank you. This side, fuck you guys. Fuck you. They're hearing the same jokes you're hearing. Fuck you, guys. <laughs> What's on you? There's no vaginas at that table. That's why I got so sad. Oh, one. One on the end over here. You got one. It's like eight dudes and one girl. I saw this movie before. Where's the midget? Thank you, those who watch porn. You don't watch porn. What the fuck are you doing here? Get free stuff with a vagina, huh? Any great girls? Everything delicious? How's your drink? Nice? You ain't paying for that shit, are you, girl? She's like, <laughs> silly Negro. I can't pay for drinks and carry a vagina all day. 
You have to do one or the other. <laughs> Look at the women laughing, all the men like, wait, you're right, man. I think Montel Williams is right. I don't blame you, if I had a vagina, I wouldn't pay for anything. Nothing. Metro car, dime bag. I walk right in the store, like boom. I don't know why the store is so dusty. How much is that? I'ma still have a deep voice with a vagina. I like how nobody thought that was weird. The whole crowd was like, oh, he sound like Beyonce. <laughs> How much is that? $300? I don't think so, motherfucker. Put it in a bag. What? Swipe it again. Thank you, those with good credit. If you're not laughing, your life is in shambles. <laughs> Trying to buy a house with cash. <laughs> The Jews are mocking you. Thank you, those who understand finance. Like when I said Jew, fucking crowd got a little tight. As soon as I said Jew. Thank you, black dude. I did not expect the black dude's laugh to be that psychopathic. That was a crazy laugh. Like he's in a car with a kid in a trunk shooting people at gas stations. Thank you, smarter people. Thank you. Jokes only work if you know stuff. That's how it works, you gotta know stuff. If you don't know shit, I'm just a nigger dancing in front of bricks. Niggerin' bricks, niggerin' bricks, niggerin', niggerin'. It sounds like a breakfast cereal, don't it? Niggerin' bricks. I would start my day with niggerin' bricks. Full of vitamins. Comes with a metro card. <laughs> laugh, laugh, concern. <laughs> I like this crowd, a little confused. But I'm definitely intrigued. Arms folded, button down. I like my arms folded when I'm wearing button downs. <laughs> buy the book, Rick. Look at you, motherfucker. I do things by the book. <laughs> What's your name, button down? Andrew. Andrew, this story is getting whiter and whiter, ain't it, Andrew? <laughs> I can almost taste the apple cinnamon from the hot fucking beverage. <laughs> and drizzle to the fizz, fizz. Where you from, Andrew? You look a little whiter than other white people. Where you from? Queens. What? Queens, Melody Queens. Where were you born and raised, son, bitch? <laughs> Calm down, black dude. <laughs> It's like, thank you. No, where you from, motherfucker? No, where you from, motherfucker? You're like nine black dudes and one black dude, you know? You're like a whole bunch of black dudes wrapped up in one black fella. Where you from originally? Chicago. No, you from Chicago? You from outside of Chicago, Illinois. Nigga, you was born out of your mother's uterus. <laughs> but you don't say, hey, I'm from the uterus, you know. <laughs> you town, nigga. <laughs> you town, motherfucker. <laughs> you town? Placenta, bitch. Placenta. You were raised in Illinois, man, just say it. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> he hates me, he hates me already. <laughs> Where's Kurt? <laughs> I'm here for Kurt. I don't, I don't need this shit. <laughs> Kurt's late, nigga. <laughs> Kurt is late. And all you got is me. Andrew, you here with some friends and shit? Are you in a relationship? You got a girlfriend? I'm married. Married? How is the wife? She's at home. Sure she is, Andrew. <laughs> Poor Andrew. The husband is always the last to know. 
She's with a new black boyfriend now, Andrew. We call him the Kwanzaa Kid. We go to the same meetings with the fucking psychopath. I'm joking, Andrew. Good for you, man, get married. You got kids? Good for you. Kids are assholes. Kids are assholes. First of all, everybody in here was a kid before. You know you're a fucking asshole. You're this tall, you're a virgin. You're gonna set some shit on fire, that's how it works. It's like, fuck you, Christmas tree. Everybody's got a kid or found a kid or pulled the kid out of a tree and claimed it. I'll explain. Madonna, Angelina, and Sandra got themselves a little niglet. Did you see it? <laughs> I can say it, but if you laugh, you're fucking racist. I'm sorry. Niglet is funny. I don't care who you are. If you're not laughing, you're a fucking liar. It's niglet. It's fucking funny. I challenge everybody in here to go home tonight. Go into a room by yourself. Say niglet and not laugh your ass off. You're gonna laugh, you're gonna thank me. <laughs> Niglet. Martin Luther King could have been here, like, what'd he say? Niglet? Holy shit. <laughs> I have a new dream. <laughs> thank you, those who know history. <laughs> Asian dude, I see you catching every joke. Fuck you, Asian dude. Every time I look over there, you're like, <laughs> got it. <laughs> beanie, beanie, beanie. I heard the James Bond movie. <laughs> All right, we ready to have some fun. You ready to have some fun tonight? No, no. Are you ready to have some fun tonight? Oh, we got a show for you. We got controversy in the house. We got black people touching white people. We're going to have some fun. Ready? Yeah. Clap it up. Let me introduce your first comedian. One second. Very funny man. You might have heard him on Race Wars podcast. Y'all give it up, make it loud for Will Silver. <laughs> Willie, come on. <laughs> Willie. Hello, everybody. How y'all doing? I um, I'm uh, good to be here. I've, I've been uh, I've been traveling. I went to London. And uh, London in the house, I freaking love the British accent. I think it's sexy as shit. But when women talk, when guys talk, you just sound regular. But when women talk, it's sexy. I was looking, when I was in London, I was looking for the subway. They call the subway the tube. The tube. And I asked this lady, I said, where's the subway at? She said, you mean the tube? I was like, I got a tube in my pants, and you just said that. And in the subway in London, I'm not sure you guys know about this, but they got a, a GPS system that tell you when the next train is coming, when the next train is coming. But like, like six next trains with the exact time when that train is coming. And I realized that New York City got a way better GPS system for their trains. This is New York City subway's GPS system. This is it right here. You see how much better that is? <laughs> and for the people that's not from New York City, this stance I'm doing, I ain't trying to be cool. This ain't a black thing. This is just in case there's a crazy person behind you trying to push on a truck like, when you try to push my tracks, I'll kill you, bitch! Because in New York City, you cannot be looking for the train like this. Because someone might be like, oh, he want to meet Jesus. What? You gotta do just like this here. And this back leg is your ankle leg. It'll hold you down, keep you grounded. The front leg is bent at a slight angle and it's supposed to act like a spring, you know, like, you know, you don't wanna be rigid. Also, in case of the big gush of wind, like, oh yeah. And, and always, just before you look for the train, you gotta always make a, make a few checks, make sure no crazies behind you, for real, for real, like, You ever waited for the train so long that you look both ways? Man, I don't care which train come first. 
I see you on train right now. I'm late as hell. If this one come first, I'll go upstairs, go around to the other side and come get on that one to just go for the ride. Cause I just need to be sitting on the train to calm my nerves. Cause this is the 13th time this week, I'm late. 13 times in a week cause I got two jobs. Because I'm Haitian. Haitians have a lot of jobs for no reason. I, I, my, 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 my good friend who's Haitian, he had a job for another job to support another, like to support the travel for this other job. He had to get another job. I need another job for that job so I could travel without paying the travel expenses for that job. Yeah. Wanna just go to that job? No, 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 I need both jobs. My dad thought two jobs was nothing. My dad thought two jobs, he was lazy. Like, that's it, just two jobs? You just have two jobs? Is that what you tell, two jobs, one, two. That's what you're telling me, two jobs. That, that's all you have, two jobs. What, what do you do with the rest of your time? Sleep, sleep. I'm sorry there, I can't, I'll never sleep again. I was uh, I was outside earlier, man, helping women with their self-esteem, helping them boost their self-esteem and their image, doing a little cat calling. You know what I'm saying? I give, I like to give back. I like to give back. Everybody's talking shit about cat calling, but no one look at the other side of cat calling, man. The, you know the, you know the, the when it works. The guys who got booty and uh, booty after booty from the that cat calling. The relationships that, that people that went into relationships from cat calling. So when I, I, I remember when I had this dress on and these nice little shoes and I had this top. I was walking down the street. Then I heard, hey, what's up with that ass? And here we are 15 years later. <laughs> Who knew that was my soulmate was <laughs> sitting on top of a car saying, what's up with that ass, bitch? <laughs> Cat calling. And look, man, you know what it is? I'm not sure you guys know about this. That video, there's a, for the ones who don't know, there's this lady who taped this video of her walking down up in Harlem with some tight pants and a tank top for 10 Ten hours. No, I'm, I know. I mean, ten hours. There's ten hours of walk. You know what ten hours is? Ten hours of anything is a lot. You tell me you're just walking ten hours, just taking these insults. Ten hours. Get the fuck out of here. Ten hours. And and but they they the, the, what they she didn't tell you they, they apologized for. They took the white guys parts out. They took all the white guys lines out because she didn't find those offensive. <laughs> So that just tells me it's a language thing. It's a language thing. Look, there's some, there's, if you go to the hood, there's some, there's some ways guys compliment you in the hood, but it's a compliment. They don't mean no harm. They don't mean no harm. It's just a comp example. This is going to sound very harsh, but it's, it's, it's a compliment. <laughs> hey, girl, you look like you suck a mean-ass dick. <laughs> no, I don't. All right, Ma, get home safe. Get home safe. Have, have a good day, Ma. Dick sucking lips or non dick sucking lips. You, dick sucking lips, they, they look good. They, there's a way dick sucking lips look good. Like, wow, they look like they suck a mean dick. You know what I'm saying? Do you understand what I'm saying now, ma'am? Like, you she, she said, I, I heard you the first time. I heard you. I say, I'm just telling you, in case you hear it, don't get offended, like, say, thank you. <laughs> and then she's raising money to stop cat, can you stop cat calling, like, what are you gonna do about right? Pay people like, hey, don't, don't, don't yell out no more. Pay $30. We're gonna raise enough money to pay all these guys to stop yelling shit out to women. No, she's gonna raise the money to show she gotta buy another wardrobe for herself. <laughs> That's not, I like, I like, I like a big booty. Is that bad? 
Thank you, one guy. You don't like big booty, sir? Thank you, man. Now, now, when you see a when you see a girl walking down the street, you take a little take a little peek, right? I, you may not say nothing, but you take a little peek. They want to stop that too, like you can't even look. Like I'm a look, I'm a looker. And you know what I do with that look, with that information? You know what I do with that information? I go home and rape myself. <laughs> This is what I do. I, I judge off a lot. My house looked like a crime scene of the DNA. You take a black light to my room, you see all my kids all over the place. Daddy, why you do this to us? That's what my kids were saying because I'm Haitian. Like, why you, why you do this, Daddy? Oh, uh oh. Why you, why you put us in a sock? Mad crunchy socks in my house from all the cat calling. Thank you. Good night. Y'all give it up for Will Sylvan! Ah, oh, funny stuff. Funny stuff. I was actually in that cat calling video. I was the guy who walked next to her for six uncomfortable minutes. So where you from? You smell like a Sagittarius. the whole thing out and then what it is we got more show if you want it do you want more show say yeah race was podcast live show we have more show if you want it if you want more show please say yes next man coming to the stage one of my personal favorites what can i say i love this guy y'all give it up make it loud for hannibal barry that he could have bought in 2006 <laughs> and how much they cost now. And Hannibal, you see the building next door to yours? 2006, the guy offered it to me for $43. <laughs> it's worth two million now. Hannibal, you see the one across the street? That one right there, could have bought it for a lukewarm combo halal plate. <laughs> 1.6 million now. <laughs> Neighborhood is changing. I live here in New York. I like, I enjoy traveling a lot. I, one of my favorite cities to travel to is New Orleans. I like New Orleans a lot. Last time I was there, I went to a basketball game. Their team is the Pelicans, is their team. I thought it was goofy as fuck when they changed their name to the Pelicans, but it's far from being the worst NBA franchise name, though. Know? Like the, 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 there's the Spurs, San Antonio Spurs. It's, that's just part of a boot that can fall off. They named the whole franchise that. There's the Utah Jazz, which used to be the New Orleans Jazz, but then they moved to Utah, and there's nothing jazzy about Utah at all. Least Jazz, actually a felony to own a saxophone in Utah. But I thought the Pelican name was pretty goofy until I went, I looked up Pelicans on YouTube. I did some research, search Pelican on YouTube. First result is a video of a Pelican walking up to a group of pigeons and then eating one whole. <laughs> just ate them all. He didn't walk away afterward. He didn't run. He just 
sat around like, that was crazy. I just ate your friend in front of you. I just ate your friend in front of you. How did that make you feel? Look me in my eyes and tell me how that made you feel. That had to be so crazy. I couldn't even imagine if somebody did that to me and I did it to you. Holy shit. Were you filming that, man? Let me see that shit right now. Let me see that. So I got respect for the Pelican after that. The Pelicans play in the building called the Smoothie King Center. Yeah. I didn't know the smooth, I didn't know Smoothie King was crushing it like that either. I didn't know they were doing that well. I didn't know Smoothie King was getting money like that, but congrats to them. Also, it's very practical because they're one of the few companies that own NBA arenas that can they can sell their product there. You can buy a smoothie at the Smoothie King Center and watch the game, but nobody's going to the Staples Center and buying a printer and then watching the Lakers. Nobody's going to the Quicken Loans Arena and getting some 39% interest rate bullshit and watching the Cavs, so congrats to them. So we watched the Pelicans play at the Smoothie King Center. So of course a third thing has to happen, right? So me and my lady, we leave, we're looking for a taxi. And we walk up to a guy, he's leaning on his taxi. He's sitting and I go, hey sir, can you take us to Frenchman Street, please? And he says, I'm waiting for somebody, I'm waiting, I can't take you. And my girl, she's white and oblivious, she said, all right. But I'm a little skeptical. I'm a skeptic at heart, because I'm thinking, who are you waiting for? Who ordered a yellow taxi ahead of time to leave a goddamn basketball game? Nobody does that. If you go order a car, you go order a nice black car. So I say to him, what's the name of the person you're waiting for? Because it could be me. And he crumbles, said, do you have permission to ask me? Do you have permission to ask me the name? Just crumbles under the pressure. Now I'm upset, because I realize he's not taking me because I'm black. And I'm upset, not only because he's a racist cab driver, but he's a racist cab driver with no improv skills. He, he could have said any name in the world at that moment, any name, and he just dropped the ball. My girl realizes he's a piece of shit, she says, you're a piece of shit. And I start yelling, fuck you, man. He said, I don't have to take you in. Yelling, and we're yelling back and forth, back and forth. It's just real unproductive conversation. And it's funny how some people see that and they want to help out. There's this bigger white guy, he walks up, he says, hey, you guys, hey, hey, stop arguing with this asshole. You don't have to do that. This is what you do. You write down his taxi number, and then you call the tax commission, and they're going to find him and get his foreign ass out of the country. He says, holy shit. Wait a second. Did you just double down on his racism right there? Did you just see him not giving us a taxi and raise it to a get the fuck out of the country? That's next level shit right there, man. I, I'll tell you why I am in life. It's a weird spot in life. I'm like D plus famous, and it's interesting. What it's an interesting way to live is D plus famous. I like it. I'll tell you what that means. That means that means that I can't just walk into a five star restaurant and get a table, but I can cut you in line at a food truck. That's what that means. <laughs> That's what D plus fame is. That means I can't just walk right into a nightclub in Manhattan, but they'll let me in after a short explanation. That's what that means. That's what D plus fame is. Like Chris Rock and Louis C.K. have fuck you money. I have, excuse me, don't talk to me like that. But, <laughs> because of that, I had some family members hit me up for money. I had a cousin text messaged me asking for $2,000. That's not a text message. You can't text for a four-figure sum. That's a phone call. You need to call me so I can hear the humility in your voice. I want to hear your fucking kids crying in the background so I know it's real. Footnote to that joke. He actually did call me twice and I didn't pick up. And then he texted, but I can't worry about details. I got to get this tour going. I got to work the, I got to feed this fucking Viacom beach, dog. Uh, 
had a weird situation a couple weeks ago. Somebody uh, filmed one of my bits, and now I can't use it on stage anymore. <laughs> Burn up my joke, man. I did a joke a couple weeks ago about uh, Bill Cosby in Philadelphia. I, and listen, I don't, and people, I didn't, I wasn't, people like, you did it, you said that about him for attention. Like, no I didn't, who tries to get attention via grainy ass cell phone videos? <laughs> if I was trying to get that shit, it would have been a three camera shoot, that should have been HD, and I would have put it up myself, and I would have had links to t-shirts below the video, that shit would have been well done if it was done by me. It was, uh, I don't want to get into that. Come on. No, no, no. Come on, no, it's a, you know what? It's a weird time just to do comedy and shit. Where people are like, yeah, we got to have something to talk about. Where people, you know, you know, Artie's in trouble. He said his shit. <laughs> <laughs> What's funny about Artie getting, in, like, people getting pissed at him, it's just weird internet shit where people are mad in the internet but he like it was like a, a fucking tape delay on it because he said that shit yesterday and then people today at noon were like hey wait a second <laughs> are we pissed yeah let's get mad it's funny but people wear that shit wears off i had a weird situation yesterday my cleaning lady brought her kid with her. Which, I know that sounds obnoxious to start a joke with my cleaning lady, but that shit only costs like 60 bucks. Grow up. It's not, it's not that extravagant at all. You spend that shit on a bar tab easily. She brought her kid with her, which I thought was rude to bring her kid without telling me. She didn't even give me 15 minutes hands up. She was on the train from Queens, all those trains are above ground. She could have texted easily. <laughs> She brought a kid with her. I'm 31, I live by myself. You can't just bring a kid into my world without letting me know. But I'm not a monster, so I know she brought her kid because she had to, not because she wanted to. So I didn't say, hey, both of you get the fuck out of here, and you come back by yourself when you're ready to clean for real, all right? I didn't say that shit because I'm not a goddamn beast. I'm a decent guy, I'm a good host. I welcome the man, pop the TV on, pop the Xbox on, grab the kids some juice. I'm a great host. I go in my room to do some work, over here the kids say, Mom, is there any way to chill? Is there anywhere else to chill? Because this couch is uncomfortable. Oh, you're uncomfortable? You're uncomfortable, because I'm uncomfortable too, little man. I didn't know your mom was doing an impromptu bring your kid to work today. I don't want you here. I'm uncomfortable, dog. There's drugs and lube, and you might find a fake pussy if you look around enough, man. I don't want you to have to see that. I'm okay with your mom seeing that. Hey, good night, y'all. I'm having a great day. Y'all give it up for Hannibal Barris! Yes! Oh, this is a great show. Man, this, this show is fire. This is fire on top of fire, on top of fire, mixed in with controversy. We have more show. You ready for more show? Say yeah. This next lady coming to the stage, she's a regular. You know, you know her from the Race Wars podcast with me and Kurt all the time. Y'all give it up. Make it loud for the very funny Caitlin Bailey. Caitlin! I came over today. The first thing the door guy said to me was like, Are you coming from court? I was like, Don't do that to me. Anyone that listens to the podcast knows I probably should have gone to law school. Ah, uh, that's my. All right. <laughs> Meh. I, like, I thought I hit rock bottom in terms of jobs I would do for money when I walked into an Outback Steakhouse and I filled out the whole application, right? Did you know they make you take a personality test to work at Outback Steakhouse? Did you know that? They do. I didn't pass, guys. I'm not qualified to work at Outback the Fuck Steakhouse based on a Scantron test. I ended up working at Starbucks. The weird thing. Working at Starbucks in Midtown Manhattan is just being a kindergarten teacher for the top part of like the worst part of the top 1%. That's all that is, right? Like, I watched a woman throw a temper tantrum because I gave her a venti instead of a grande, right? I gave her a large instead of a medium. I gave her more product, 
for less money. That's the whole thing that happened. All right. It's one of those nightmare days, right? Because I had a line of like late people that all brought their fucking screaming babies with them. We had a new girl on pastries, which is always a nightmare. We're out of coffee for a minute, which is the apocalypse, right? This woman is fighting her way like a salmon upstream to yell at me. I just wanted to let you know that I can actually afford the size of beverage that I want. Ma'am, from the way that you were yelling, thank God none of your kids are dead and you still have your clitoris. How about we relax? I was fired from Starbucks, I feel like for obvious reasons. Should've given me a personality test. Okay. Ugh. I ended up, I tutored kids on the SAT for a while, which is a weird thing. If you've never seen a 16 year old have an anxiety attack, you should do that for yourself. It's great theater. <laughs> Really. And it's not, it's not their fault, right? Because we tell kids from the time that they're old enough to talk that like how they do on this test like matters, right? Like, you know, they, they get above a certain score, someone's just gonna airdrop like a house and a spouse special for them, right? Or if they get below a certain score, they're gonna wake up like alone covered in bed bugs in Alabama with a herd of meth addicted dogs for no reason. Like, I don't know. So yeah, I, there's one kid who was like, I think I'm gonna be okay. He's like, I'm a cross team, and the debate team, and a soccer team, and a fuck the mayor. And it's like, dude, <laughs> relax. I did awesome on the SAT. I'm not qualified to work at Outback. <laughs> it's getting harder for me to do one night stands. The more hardcore I get about S and M. Is anyone else? <laughs> dating, dating's ridiculous. It's just, it's just a nightmare. Like most dating is just two people sitting across from each other doing like their best impression of a well-adjusted person for however long, right? I can't do it, I won't do it. I sit down on a first date and I'm like, look, I've had an abortion, I have a tattoo on my vagina. Every time I have sex, I have panic attacks. You wanna get in on this? Come on, the stock is low. Oh, you're actually fine with all of that? That's a huge red flag. I'm no longer interested. <laughs> I was a creepy kid growing up. I was just a creep. I was just a creep. I was just, you guys listen to the podcast already know that. I just, like, I went in the third grade, I used to carry around a book of death poetry. I'm not kidding. <laughs> right? And I remember, like, some other third grader, they were trying to have, like, a Christian, like, a, like, a nice, like, a third grade conversation with me. And she, she, like, the other third grader was like, hey, Caitlin, what's your favorite food? My favorite food is pizza. She gave me an example because she was nervous for me. <laughs> which made sense because what my third grade self came back with was poetry because it feeds my soul. <laughs> what do you mean I can't come to your summer party any more? I'm a delight. <laughs> I was an only child, obviously. Yeah, you don't get that way without growing up in a cocoon of unconditional love. That's how that happens. <laughs> uh, by the time I got to middle school, it was all like peasant skirts and black lipstick, 7 a.m., great look. <laughs> if you want to frighten people. <laughs> I'd come home after school and I'd say things like, the kids are, fun of, the kids are making fun of me, they're calling me a witch. <laughs> a sibling may have suggested, stop wearing a witch costume to school every day. <laughs> You're a nightmare. I've had sex with a statistically significant number of men. I, I come to my promiscuity fairly naturally. My mother was also a huge whore. Uh, she had like legit alcoholic daddy issues to work out. I was just raised to believe that's what feminism is. I'm not, I'm not wrong about that. Yeah. It's, it's weird because I hear like I hear all the time like men are naturally more promiscuous than women. That's that's nature, science, Jesus, whatever you got. It just hasn't been my experience, right? Like I've never not been able to fuck a guy because I lost my boner. It's never happened. <laughs> the other amazing thing about being a woman, doesn't matter how many dudes I fuck, I'm just gonna know it's my baby. That's science. <laughs> I did, 
I did the Naked show recently, which is exactly what it sounds like. Uh, yeah, it's great. Sorry I missed it. I, uh, it's like I, it, it's, it's a weird thing. I mean, you know, it's like it's like naked, naked. Like I had to get my snatch wax naked, and it. And the and I went and like the look that I was going for when I went to the, the waxing place was like, maybe she's born with it. Right? I'm just gonna hair off my belly button and thighs and pretend that this is how it is, right? And I it, like it, it's fine, but I uh, I missed I missed that I didn't get that so now I just have this like we accept gay people triangle that's like right pointing to the part of my body I'm most self conscious about which is my overweight labia. Right? I have labia that like picks a thigh in the summer. It's not nothing ladylike about it. I have I have a lot of I have a lot of vagina shame actually. Like, I can't I can't masturbate uh, with my hands because I, I get distracted looking for ingrown hairs. Thank you guys so much. My name is Caitlin. Y'all give it up for Caitlin Bailey. Ah, uh, great show so far. Guess who decided to show up? The other half of this Race Wars podcast. Y'all give it up. Make it loud for Kurt Metzger. Kurt Thank you very much. I was taping at midnight. That's how I was late. And, uh, Stop bragging. Well, because when I got here, it tells like, oh, I thought you guys weren't going to like show up like in protest for Artie. And I was like, oh, shit, maybe I should have done that. That's how we protest in Artie. We got Artie here tonight. Yeah. He's going to come tell his side of the story tonight. Yeah. Clap it up. First of all. It's right in the back. He's ready. He's ready to go. What is less racist than a white man jerking off to a black woman? That's the most. What the hell kind of world do we live in? It's what Dr. King wanted. Yeah. Well, fuck you, crowd. That was yeah, funny. Yeah. Fuck you. I don't know what you're going through, but fuck you. So wait, what are we? Are we? How are we doing this now? Are people still doing sets? Or are we yeah, talking people still doing sets. So we want to keep the show going. Who's going next? We got a real fucking bomb coming. Up. We got uh, you guys listen to the podcast. You know he's been on before. He's a very funny comedian. We got Kareem Green. Oh, up. Kareem Green's coming. Give, give it up for Kareem Green. Green. Give it up for Kareem Green. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. All right. What's up, y'all? Yeah. All right, whatever. It is what it is. <laughs> I'll be honest with you, I'm not like none of these guys. I ain't got no other jobs. This is it for me. So y'all need to like me. This don't work out for me. It's back to crime. You understand that? <laughs> don't let this V-neck fool you to make y'all feel comfortable. Now please accept me white people, V-neck. <laughs> Catch you right after the show. <laughs> like, Get up! <laughs> Kareem, I thought you did comedy. I quit, motherfucker. I win when I said goodnight. Now give me your shit. I'm the nosiest victim. So many questions. I said that to this young hood crowd. They looked at me like, yeah, and we will rob you back. <laughs> you from where you from? It's ridiculous nowadays. Honestly, I can't go back to that lifestyle. Fucking ain't what it used to be. It's not. Everything has changed. Back in the days, you knew a thug. He dressed like a thug. Baggy jeans, Timberland boots, and a hoodie. That's right. When you seen him, he was like, ah, oh, look like he about to take my finances and add it to his finances. <laughs> Across the street. Now it's changed. Yeah, now it's, uh, what is it? Is it colorful sneakers? Skin tight nipple shirts? And skinny jeans. You know how hard it is to be aggressive in skinny jeans? They tight as hell. They this tight right here. You see that? You see their leg hairs coming out. You see him from behind, you can see the ID. Don't do this, James. It ain't worth it, James. <laughs> it ain't worth it, James. It ain't worth it. 1972, you too old for this shit, James. <laughs> you know how hard it is to be aggressive when your jeans are that tight? Oh, shit. <laughs> okay. All right, let's loosen this up. All right, almost knock your whole shit over. It's all right, man. 
right. Who was paying for that anyway? You was paying for that? Oh, you was? Yeah, you lying your ass on. <laughs> I would, I would like to believe that. Women want, you know what I think about that? Women want equal pay in the workplace, right? That's what they want, yeah. And I think you deserve it. <laughs> but you don't need it, you don't need it. <laughs> you don't need the shit, no you don't. Cause you don't gotta pay for everything, that's why. You don't. Think about it, when you go out, you can go to a $10 store, get a $10 dress and meet a billionaire. Change your life. Men can't meet no, women, women don't give a damn about no man in no $10 outfit. <laughs> yeah, you ain't gonna give a fuck about us. It just ain't gonna happen. You go to the club, what do they say? Women free from nine and night to the rest of your life. <laughs> yeah. Then you get in and we buy drinks. So you straight, you don't need all that money. But you will treat, I ain't gonna be one side, you will treat every now and then, but you're very strategic. <laughs> yeah, that's why they look at the bill. $200 is not time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so they look at her. Ten dollars. Surprise! I want to treat you. The meeting they treat you. We appreciate that shit too. We do. The simple things. Dating has changed too. Nowadays, uh, women are bold. Remember, uh, you know, we used to kick it and talk and all that. Not no more. Nowadays. Ah, this girl gonna tell me, send me a dick pic. <laughs> yeah, straight up. I'm a little old school, I ain't into that. I don't do dick pics. I do dick delivery. <laughs> I, I drop the dick off. <laughs> send me a dick pic. Look out your peephole right now. Yeah, look out your peephole. Yeah, that's me with the dick. Yeah, I got it on me. Yeah, yeah, that's me with the dick, yeah. What's all that bang? That's the dick, huh? Open up the door. What you got in your hand? I got the package, UPS, ultimate penis service. Open up the door. Get this dick. <laughs> you like that, right? Ultimate penis, I deliver, I deliver. I'm trying to grow up, man, though. I really, you know, I'm trying to grow up because you know, you're getting older, you gotta kind of change. But I'm in my 30s. 30s is the most disrespected age decade of your life. You know why as soon as you hit 30, people in their 20s act like you old as hell. Yeah. Hell yeah, right? They be like, how old are you? You 30? Oh my God, I feel so sorry for you. <laughs> you gonna be all right, you 30. I'm gonna come to your house, wake you up tomorrow, make sure you wake up. <laughs> you can die in your sleep, you 30. People in their 40s act like you don't know nothing. How old are you, 38? That ain't nothing, you a baby. You ain't live life at 38, that ain't nothing. 38, you only, when you get 40, that's when you come talk to me. <laughs> but I realized something, no matter how old you get, people who are older always gonna act like you ain't old enough. Yeah. You can be like, I'm 107. <laughs> they be like, 107? <laughs> well, I'm dead. That's right, I'm dead. I've been dead for three years now. You know what it's like being dead? No, you don't. You haven't lived until you die. When you get dead, that's when you come talk to me. Ridiculous. But your age is not what make you older. You know what let you know you're getting older? It's your body. Like this morning when I woke up, the first thing I needed was a nap. That's how you know. Oh, Dan is waking up is wearing me out. We gotta take it down. I got a 45 minute snooze button. I ain't, <laughs> I ain't gonna be shit without this nap. That's all I'm saying. That's how you know you're getting older too when you start looking at shit like this. <laughs> you know, you get old as hell. I learned to appreciate simple things though. Like the other day, I won an in house jackpot. You know what that is? You all won it? Yeah, you just forgot. Think about it. You ever be getting dressed? You go out, go to work or something? And you find some money in your pocket? Yeah, look, she got excited at me. She's like, yeah, that was a good day. A good day. <laughs> you feel good. You never felt so good to find your own money. Oh, man, 
I didn't even know I was missing four dollars. <laughs> I'm not going to work today. <laughs> you call in. I'm not coming in. You don't even work here. That's why I'm not coming. You need to hire me so this conversation starts making sense. I'm tired of having four dollars. Thank y'all very much. Kareem Gray, good night, man. Y'all give it up yeah. for Kareem Green. Friend of the show. Kareem Green. <laughs> Green. Yeah, we got to bring an ex comic. And uh, we like to follow the blackest comic with the whitest comic. That's, That's right. The show. That's right. And uh, so this guy I work with at uh, Amy, the Amy Schumer program. And uh, I don't know if you know, it's almost all female writing staff, okay? Me and him are like the only sausages at this taco party. <laughs> and. Uh, <laughs> I'm most of the male presence, and the only reason I say that is because this next guy that comes in with a baby Bjorn with a small dog in it every time. <laughs> uh, but he's funny as hell, and you might have heard him on Howard Stern uh, doing Donald Sterling, which is the funniest shit in the world. He's goddamn funny. Clap it up right now for Kyle Dunnigan. Kyle Dunnigan! Kyle! I am not the whitest comic. That is bullshit. I don't, I don't carry my dog and a baby Bjorn. I want to try. I want to try. Bear with me. I want to try. I want to do a little improv warm up. Um, I'm gonna just make up a song about someone in the crowd here. Yeah, how about you, sir? What is your name? Cody. Okay. Is that really loud? Yep. Woo! We got a hot piano. <laughs> Cody, we've never met before, correct? <laughs> this is all off the top of my head. I'm gonna gather information and then make your song. What do you do for a living? Filmmaker. Any films we've heard of? No. All right. That's okay. It's not an easy business. What? Uh, what's your favorite hobby? Watch filming. Uh, give me a lot to work with, aren't you? Uh, to, There's your song. There was a guy named Cody, and he was a total douche. Improv is hard, I'm not actually worried. That sounds like every horror movie music background, doesn't it? I'm not even trying. Someone gets paid. Someone gets a paycheck. They're like, hey, we need that music by next week. He's like, you can have it now. Like, oh, that's pretty good. You know what I'm talking about? Like, Marsha's stuck in the basement. Like, you guys? Stuck in the basement. And they're all up in the kitchen, like... <laughs> Where the fuck is Marsha? I'm in the basement. It's gone. It's gone. It's gone. No. No one likes her. I'm not going down there. You know, smash it, you know, writing songs, you know. I saw a Paul McCartney interview, and they're like, hey, how do you write, how do you write, like, a hit song? And his answer was so vague and wandering. He's like, you know, you know, it's magic, you know, songs, you know, guitar, you know, songs, you know. 
fall from the sky, you know. You know, land on the back of a turtle, you know. You know, you know, turtle, you know, the turtle, you know, walks up to you, you know, got it, you know, guitar, you know. You know, turtles. It's a song that uh, John Lennon wrote, actually, right before he died. What's that in your hand? <laughs> oh, it's been a long time. It's been a while. These children are grown. Oh, let's bring it down. I got a love song that I wrote. I'm gonna get serious for a second. They, um, I fell in love with this girl and she um, moved off to Europe and I didn't want her to forget me, so I wrote, wrote this song. It's called Hold On. song is a uh, I went to a rock concert and they had to make announcements which there's nothing less rock than being like are you ready to rock we just want to thank coca-cola for having us here tonight coca-cola that cool and refreshing drink motherfuckers Minions from hell drive a Ford Focus. What are you? Devil monkeys left your lights on, motherfuckers. You want to go to the parking lot and check that out, bitch? Now, are you ready to rock? I said, you ready to rock? I can't hear you. Are you ready to rock? tell you about the raffle. There is a raffle right after the show. Buy one ticket, get two for free, motherfuckers. It's a pretty good deal when you think of it. Oh God, that hurts my voice when I do that bit. time am I doing? <laughs> Three minutes? Oh, my closer's like eight minutes long. <laughs> Three minutes. This song, um, you guys are the best card I've ever had. I don't think Harry Connick Jr. can play the piano. He plays like three notes and he bangs on it. He's like, it had to be you. It had to be you. I just dropped a sandwich on my piano. Then a cat ran across it. Nobody else gonna throw it. Both love stuff, baby. It had to be you. I like those crooner guys, though. Those like Frank Sinatra. They were, that's like the last manly man was those Frank Sinatra, they had a the drink, they got a cigarette, and they're gambling. Even when they sang their songs, even though they were kind of girly songs, they put a ha, like a, like a guy sound. Even, in, they were like, somewhere, ha, ha, beyond the sea, power like girls, somewhere, football, ha, 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 hike. last song I'm gonna do. I'm gonna get off after this song. Let's go home to mother. Mother's worried sick about it. <laughs> so 
real Sam too close to my mother, but mother says they're just jealous little sluts. <laughs> This is another love song that I wrote. I, I wrote I wrote this with this girl and uh, she didn't like it, but your legs are long and firm, your skin's as white as a dove. I do believe the Lord blessed me with an angel from above. The only thing I'd change about you is your face. Thank you all very much. Enjoy the rest. Y'all give it up for Kyle Dunnigan! Wow. Holy shit. I didn't even tell Kyle there was a piano here. He just is ready to play piano for He's got the talent. He's got talent. Yeah. Very talented. Yeah. All right, well, we got like 3,000 comics, so... This next comic. Oh! We have a lot of favors on the show. Listen, you guys are really like get loud with this one. This is the show of the festival based on our lineup. This is the best show of the New York Comedy Festival. Yeah, Make I, some noise. How do I do that? How the do best we do show. It? They need us. Yeah, they need real, it. Yeah, real quick. Just a round of applause for Rebecca from the Creek in the Cave. Oh, who yes, Rebecca. Thank us. you. And uh, Brian Boldinger. Who, who for helped putting us, put us together. John Fatty, our producer. And a uh, special drop-in guest. We, we call in a lot of figures for the show. Michael Shea from SNL came through to do a set for you, so... Y'all give it up for Michael Shea! Weekend Update SNL, baby! Thank you so much. And, oh, you guys are... I can't... Well, I really hope this uh, lasts. <laughs> This is the first time I've like been on stage in a while, so it's a little rusty, but I, I really love being on stage, so I hope you guys are you know <laughs> Wait a minute, easy. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not making money. I'm pretty sure I got paid in a drink today. So. <laughs> I, uh, no, yeah, I love, I love working there. It's weird, because like this summer I was working for The Daily Show, and that was kind of strange because that's like the smartest people on the planet and I'm not in that class. And I found out because, to give you an idea, like these shows are very different, you know. I was a writer on SNL and then I went to uh, The Daily Show and um, we have joke meetings at SNL. And the last, the last pitch I had for a joke was, was uh, about the first guy that ever made the uh, term screwed the pooch. <laughs> This is such a strange thing to say. I really screwed the poop. <laughs> it means you, means you fucked a dog. Which means there was a guy that probably fucked a dog once and tried to equate that with every mistake. <laughs> and people were like, no man, it's not the same. <laughs> so there was a guy like, oh boy, you, you messed up that coffee one. It's like that one time I fucked that dog. No, it's not like that time. You fucked the dog. That stands alone in the history of the... But somehow it's stuck. So now when you fuck up coffee, you like, I screwed the pooch, and you, you're okay with that. No one even thinks about that guy. So that was a sketch that I thought was gonna definitely be on TV. Was not. And... Uh, <laughs> so then I went to The Daily Show. That's the last sketch I wrote. And when I went to The Daily Show, uh, we, were, we did our joke meeting for The Daily Show, and it was about a, a college rape case, and we were pitching jokes. <laughs> These are the smartest people on the planet. They're pitching jokes on a college rape case. And I'm like, hey, maybe we shouldn't, maybe we shouldn't. Maybe, <laughs> maybe we should just skip that. And they were like, no, this is important. We have to talk about it. I was like, I don't know, I got this great idea about fucking a dog that might go over way better. It's weighing over my head. <laughs> There's certain things you can't get away with saying, you know? I learned that. <laughs> but, you know, it, it's weird, because, like, like I, even at a comedy show, sometimes you can't say certain things. Like, you guys laugh, you guys are fun, this is a kind of a good crowd, you know, but not all crowds are good. Like, one time I was doing a joke about the N-word, right? And um, people were not 
happy with it. So I started doing crowd work to like loosen them up to make them feel fun again. And I started talking about lighter things and it worked, it fucking worked. So I, it worked so well that I wanted to start telling the joke that I was telling, but I forgot what the joke was. So I say into the microphone, what was I just talking about? And this white lady in the back yells out, niggers! And the whole crowd... <laughs> did you laugh at that shit? But that other audience did not. They were horrified. They were like, hit her, hit her. I was like, I'm not gonna hit her. She's absolutely correct. That's exactly what I was talking about. It's not like I said, yeah, so me and my friends are playing basketball. What was I just talking about? Niggers! It wasn't that at all. And when she said it, she wasn't like, niggers! She was like, niggers! Poka! Like she scared herself. <laughs> So I couldn't be mad at her. She wasn't racist, she wanted to hit a punchline, so. I didn't get upset, I wasn't upset about it. Cause so I understand that she just said it for a certain reason. If it was a dude, maybe I would have been upset. Like when a white guy says the N word, I get upset. Uh, because, I don't know, it puts a lot of pressure on me as a black guy. I don't know if there's black guys here, but it's a, it puts like, like when a white guy says the N-word, it means I gotta fight him. <laughs> like even if I'm not that upset, I gotta fucking fight. It's in the black dude contract. I gotta fight whoever I hear say. And I gotta win the fight, because if I lose, that means he gets to say it again. <laughs> and that story's gonna need a better ending when I tell people at the meeting. But yeah, man, I was in New York, this white dude called me a nigga yesterday. What'd you do? Well, then I got my ass kicked in 15 minutes. And then he yelled it again and rode off on a city bike. It was embarrassing. But I honored the contract. I don't know what you want me to... If I was a white guy, I'd see it. Once, like on my birthday. <laughs> Say it to a black. I would say it at a black. <laughs> Here's how I do it. <laughs> no. I get one of those cabs that'll probably be a lot easier to get. And I, uh, <laughs> sit in the back and roll up alongside of one or something. Roll the window down. <laughs> Nigga. <laughs> drive, 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 drive. <laughs> Don't try that shit. That'd be awful. I might, I wouldn't do that. I would probably do it to like a dude I didn't like. Not even because I hate black people. <laughs> Just because I would like, maybe I hate Jerome. <laughs> Not racist, I'm Jerome-ist. <laughs> yeah, call Jerome a nigga. Just to ruin his day. <laughs> That's all these bad words are, they're just shit to ruin your fucking day. There are no racists anymore. You know why there's no racists? Because people don't have power anymore. Yeah, it's just fucking this generation, there's no self-esteem. People don't feel good about yourself, you can't be racist. I had a white lady called me a nigga one time in a car and I didn't even get mad at her. She was like, uh, she kept apologizing. Like, I'm not racist, I swear I'm not racist. Like, I know you're not racist. I know you for years. You can't be racist because you have low self-esteem. <laughs> and you can't think you're better than niggas if you don't even believe in yourself. It's just not. How could you? You know the self-esteem you need to have to be a fucking racist? <laughs> I let a homeless dude call me a nigga on the train one time because he was homeless and I thought that was the rule. You just let homeless people say whatever the fuck they want and you act like you don't see them. <laughs> that just me? When I get on the train, the homeless dude starts yelling shit, I turn to one of those British guards where I stand real still, look straight ahead. You can say whatever you want, homeless man. You can never break me. Just don't touch me with anything wet. Room. I gotta go with this, Michael Che. Thank you so much. <laughs> Michael Mike, Che! Mike, you can't. Is it hard to get a cab, Mike, still? What? Is it hard to get a cab? I mean, I know they probably don't watch SNL, but. 
Really? You say that right, standing right next to me. Yeah, because we, after we do our podcast, sure, we'll go outside and sure I'll have to hail a cab. And they pass him right by. And he's like, Kurt, hail a cab for me. And then uh, I hit go to hail a cab. And then they also pass me right by. <laughs> it hurts. As you should. Your whiteness I, is diminished. It is a little bit. Yeah. I should be getting a lot more white shit than I'm getting, man. You're not getting it, though. My squand dude hanging out with Sherrod. <laughs> That's the bottom line. But you can say the N-word, so it's no. great. <laughs> Save that for the big closer, Sherrod. Okay. <laughs> don't blow our big closer. You got a whole nigger dance thing, number We don't have the song here, do we? Uh, I think we might have the song. Do we here. have the song? Do we have the nigger song? Or the... No, I we don't, don't have it. We may, maybe not. We'll edit it into the podcast. Those who don't know it, our theme song <laughs> is the He-Man theme song. Right, but with, but but with nigger instead. With nigger instead. Yeah. Well, because here's the thing. We don't just like say the N-word. Because we, we're not like calling people it, but it's just lame to say the N-word. So we like have a ceremony. Like to say the phrase the N-word. Yeah. We just say nigger or faggot. We're not derogatory, but we right. just say that we're talking about the word. We just say it. So we have a ceremony, and Sherrod lays his dick on my shoulder. and then uh, That's the only you way you can say right it as a white person. A black man's cock has to touch your and shoulder or collarbone. Now, now have a black cock on your collarbone. And let me tell you something. It's uh-huh. worth it. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Speaking of <laughs> speaking of black men with powerful penises, uh, <laughs> this next guy is a dear, dear friend of ours. Uh, you uh, might know him from the Chappelle Show. The Clap funniest. Up, the funniest. Clap it up for Greer Barnes. Greer Barnes. Greer Yeah. <laughs> How y'all doing? <laughs> what, the rest of y'all scared? Man? It's the sixth black guy on the show. It's not even February. <laughs> I didn't always want to be a stand up comic, I wanted to be an astronaut. Fuck you laughing at. <laughs> Wanted to be an astronaut until my cousin gave me a bong hit and I was like, <laughs> we don't have to travel that far. <laughs> Milky Way is right there. <laughs> I always wanted to be that first black astronaut to make contact with an alien race. My ship would land on some distant planet. I'd hop off my ship. I don't know why I'm doing that, because there's no sound in space. What's good, my dude? Nah, I'm human from the planet Earth. See that blue ball? That's where I'm from. <laughs> nah, we ain't got no green people, but it's cool. <laughs> well, we'll probably call you nigga at first. Gets no respect. Breasts get respect, well deserving. Because they do things like feed babies. Yeah, they fight cancer. <laughs> yeah, they make a blouse look extraordinary. And they're always appropriate. If all you women stood up and took your breast out right now, all the fellas would be like, this is the best show ever. <laughs> Shit is acceptable. Never been in a party, fellas, with a group of girls. I'm like, ah, Samantha, Amy, Tracy, wanna do it? Yeah, on three, one, two, three, yeah! Hey. Serious. That's acceptable. 
I don't give a fuck how much fun we having, fellas. We can never be like, oh shit, take your dicks out! <laughs> And if you can do that with your dick, fuck you. <laughs> My girlfriend's Dominican. Yeah, she asked me one day, she was like, Papi, if your dick could talk, right? What would it say? I looked at her and I said, I'm going to take this opportunity to speak on behalf <laughs> of all men. If our dicks could talk, they would probably say, touch me. <laughs> I'm going outside to get some cake. Touch me. <laughs> what kind of cake is it? <laughs> touch me with the cake. <laughs> <laughs> the other psycho question my girlfriend asked me <laughs> was she's like, Papi, what would you do if we woke up tomorrow and I had your dick and you had my vagina? <laughs> and I looked at her and I was like, you gotta move out. <laughs> type of creepy shit is that? <laughs> I'm 49 years old. If I woke up tomorrow and I had a vagina, I'd stick stuff in it. It's my first vagina. All my old Star Wars figures. R2D2, B2, D2. Chewbacca, <laughs> Darth Vader. Get me out of here. Use the force in a gentle way. We don't want the cops involved. There's really nothing funny about the vagina. It's a very sensitive, smoking hot, sexy apparatus that's under attack by the extreme right wing of this country, so we have to protect the vagina. Fuck yeah, you ever see it? It's got flaps and shutters. Let's see. It's a little doorbell right there. Can the dick come in? <laughs> Not tonight. I got cake. <laughs> Go do the back door. What? <laughs> it's cake. <laughs> All right, I gotta go. Bye. Finishing ovation for Greer. Look at that. People standing up. Finishing off with cake for anal. <laughs> Greer, that's like a good business idea. That's the name of my next album, Cake for Anal. Yeah. You got Chris Brown to be on the album. <laughs> Thank you mostly this side. What is up with you guys? Yeah. Have you been, hey, how many of you get catcalled like in that video? Women. Well, anybody. Come on, be honest. Be honest. I mean, I don't know if you like, do you like it or not like it? No. You know where I live in Washington Heights? Well, Thanks, I'm ag Lutz. hey, I'm against it. I don't I don't say shit. I let a woman walk by and then I stare at her ass when she can't see me like a gentleman. I was raised right. <laughs> now, Sherrod, would you say catcalling is more of a black thing or a black and Latin thing? <laughs> you still have the video! Fuck you, crowd. How dare you, crowd? How the organization is called Holla Back. How dare back, come you. on. White no, dudes but, do it too if they work construction or homeless. Well, you know what? I, <laughs> I saw 
Because I live in Washington Heights, it's all Dominican. So I see this Dominican girl walking to work, okay? okay? Just trying to get to work. This Dominican dude, for like 10 minutes, is following her and her aunt. It's like 10 minutes. Yeah. Hey, mommy, mommy, just chase him before. Maybe he... it was really his mommy? Well, that's the thing. He was like five. So that, I do want to <laughs> give him the benefit of the doubt. It could have been his mommy. All right, we got to bring this last. So, uh, Controversy. Yeah. Our favorite guest. So, our favorite, favorite guest of our podcast is uh, this guy, Artie Lang. Easily. Uh, yeah. E and so, easily. Listen, listen. Yeah. Wait, 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 wait. Wait, yeah, let's introduce him. That's how he does. He does. He introduces wrong, Artie. Yeah. I do he it. says the name first. You know, I like a college fucking <laughs> college show fucking host. <laughs> All right. Well, so I did a show at midnight that I was supposed to do with Artie. Right. And Jim Norton. But then there's a Twitter up for it, which I, don't, I never understand any Twitter thing. I don't know if I'm old or something. I don't get... I don't even know what the fuck... Like, I can't read it enough to even be offended at it. Western Hemisphere problems. Yeah. So, Artie wasn't on, but he's still on our show. So, we're going to bring up Artie Lang right now. Do a second. Artie Lang! Artie Lang, guys. Come on, make some noise, crowd. Stop fucking around. Here he is. Thank you, guys. Love you, too. What's up, everybody? How are you? Still in my Halloween costume, I haven't had a chance to change. Uh, I guess you guessed it, I was Lena Dunham from Girls. <laughs> I, I can't get the fake tattoos off. By the end of the night, I'm naked and I'm blowing a weird looking guy. That's how... <laughs> that was a good costume, I thought. I got me a lot of fucking dick. <laughs> Rough day for me. Uh, Twitter, man. Twitter. I, I, I'm going to embrace it. Everyone thinks I'm a racist now, which isn't true, but I'll embrace it for money. <laughs> I think that's what Paula Dean should have just done a racist cooking show. You know? <laughs> oh, wait! We're making Jew horns. <laughs> Pastry shaped like a Jew's horns. <laughs> You'll clean up, so I'm just gonna embrace the fucking razor to mine out. I only got three years to live anyway. Look, look at me. I mean, my God, my, my liver is bloated. Uh, I got type 2 diabetes. I'm, you know, I got about two, year, two and a half years top, so I'm just gonna embrace the race and leave some money for my mom. I'm, uh, I'm gonna become a racist country singer. Uh, and I'm starting to write some songs. If you want to help, anybody know any words that end in igger? <laughs> There's less than you think. <laughs> yeah, you gotta be careful nowadays with the racism. You get in trouble when you're not really racist. Like Nick Walenda almost misspoke. You see that? Nick Walenda climbing across the fucking thing in Chicago. And I almost heard him say there were too many riggers in downtown Chicago. <laughs> but he said something different. <laughs> It's about certain groups can't fuck with you. So I'll attack them, because I'm not a clever comedian like you've seen here tonight. I'll, like, you know we're a bunch of pussies midgets? I'll attack midgets. You see a, a, a midget on TV, they try to sell you this shit. Calling a little person a midget is the same thing as calling a black man the N-word. I thought that was interesting. So I went out one day and I tried both things. <laughs> See if there's a difference, a little bit of experiment. And it's a lot of work. I went out and I found a random little person, which is fucking hard to do. And I said, hey, midget. And I found a random black man, which is much fucking easier. And I said, hey, nigger. It turns out there is a huge fucking difference. One will get you smacked in the shin. <laughs> and the other one will get your fucking ass kicked. So the lesson people never, ever, ever call a black man the N-word. Unless they're a midget. <laughs> then do whatever the fuck you want. I, I can't save the whole world tonight. <laughs> I'm one obese man. But the Twitter people are very, very, very mean and very stupid. They really are. Uh, some of them are clever. Like, one guy thinks I should have a sex change and become an actress and uh, have my name be Obese Witherspoon. That's kind of... That's 
kind of clever. You know? <laughs> My favorite, some people took, I mean, like, I, I had the audacity to say this black chick on ESPN was hot. I thought she was hot. And I said I would love to have, have a fancy of her whipping me. <laughs> and maybe I was dressed like Thomas Jefferson. <laughs> Maybe I can. <laughs> but in the end, she gets away. She runs free. <laughs> you pissed at that? She's free! <laughs> Again, you're not getting it. It's so hard within 140 characters to explain <laughs> the Revolutionary War. <laughs> and I shouldn't have tried. I shouldn't have tried, but people took it a little too far, man. So I apologize for it. I fucking caved in like the pussy that I am. I apologize. And then I get these fucking... I swear to God, some guy tweeted me a picture of this poor black woman who was killed and raped in South Carolina last week. And underneath it said, hey, Artie, apology unaccepted. <laughs> that's a little... That's taking it a little too far, man. I mean, I don't see how... I'm responsible for that woman's death. <laughs> Apparently you disagree, I'm sorry. <laughs> Another guy, this is a true story actually, this is one idiot, he actually thought I was a correspondent for ESPN. <laughs> <laughs> so not for nothing, ESPN should fire their correspondent, Artie <laughs> Yeah, that would have been in bad taste if I were actually a correspondent. <laughs> to say that I wanted to dress up like a founding father and get whipped by one of our reporters <laughs> until I came. That would have been a dumb move if I were an ESPN correspondent. I had to remove my profile from black people meet. <laughs> I was sad, sorry, I can't fucking integrate fucking the internet, man. I got a lot of guys, I, I'm starting to use the internet now. I was very, very, uh, very, very ignorant with the internet, but now I'm using Grindr. I'm trying to show I'm open-minded. Tinder, I use Grindr. You know, it's funny, in New York, if you use Grindr, it just shows you the nearest New York jet. <laughs> You're on Grindr. Michael Vick is in a deli 50 yards from you. Tinder I used, and I use Uber. I use all three of those things at once. I can do it. For instance, like tonight, I, at 1 a.m. tonight, I'm fucking a chick while a gay guy watches in the back of a town car. <laughs> <laughs> MMA fighting, I don't get that either. Somebody, I, I, I like the old boxing. MMA, I hate MMA fighting because people are in sneakers and socks. Uh, you know, in, in regular boxing, they have shoes, they have shoes. In MMA, they're bare feet. They're like the yellow, sticky fucking feet. And I'm like, eh. And I hate it. My buddies go, it's a man's man thing. You should try watching. I try watching, but put MMA on right now. If you put it on right now, here's what you'll see. Two guys in the missionary position, fucking. <laughs> That's what you'll see. Put it on. You'll see two guys, one guy's spread eagle, another guy's on top of them. And they're not even fighting. They're just like whispering shit. <laughs> Then out of nowhere, the guy on top starts pummeling the guy on the bottom. He's like, ah, ah, ah. Here's what MMA fighting looks like to me. It looks like two gay guys are having sex. Then out of nowhere, one of them realizes he's not gay. <laughs> Just fuck Chuck Liddell. <laughs> All right, I'll end with this. People are doing music. I'll end with a song. Uh, I don't get the modern music either, and this is sort of racial, but Alicia Keys and uh, Alicia Keys and uh, what's his name? Jay Z had a fucking song out a couple of years ago called Empire State of Mind. And people used to sue Black Sabbath for satanic lyrics. What's someone going to sue this song? In this song? This is a, uh, she has a beautiful voice, Alicia Keys. It's a duet, a hit song. But it's basically a blueprint on how to be a crack dealer in New York City. I'm paraphrasing, but here's how that song goes. Jay-Z goes, 
I used to cop an all and went down to my stash box and cooked a little crack in the McDonald's pants with my soul crack to your grandma. And then I made a deal with the Gambinos to sell all the cocaine below West A Street. And then I bought out of the apartment building. I would make cocaine in the front of the building. I would sell it out the back of the building. And then I'd have a whole criminal empire. And with the Gambinos, I started kidnapping and I would kidnap the daughter of government officials. And then I started, you know, stealing cars. I had a whole car theft ring. I was a multi-millionaire from, from criminal enterprise. By the time I was 22, me and my gang were over. And then out of nowhere, Alicia Keys goes, no! Where dreams are made out. And I guess I'm offensive, right? But I can walk away with that song because I am offensive. If I were Jay-Z, the next person that song would be this, it would be this crazy. And then if you get arrested, you go into jail cell and you make a shiv out of a toothbrush. And the way you do that is you pour a toothpaste onto a toothbrush and make it into a point. And you put it in the microwave oven. When it comes out, it's like a shank or a shiv or a knife. You put that down your orange jumpsuit. When you get to the cafeteria, you stab a guard. Don't stab him here. That's a murder rap. You want to stab him right here, you just pass out. And when you get outside, you start doing hits for the Gambinos. When you dig a hole for a dead body, you put lime in a hole. That'll make the body dissolve. If you don't have lime, you want to dump the body over the Hellgate Bridge because the current is so crazy under the Hellgate Bridge. You take the body all the way out to the Atlantic Ocean. No one will ever find the body. Yeah! I'm going to bring the guys back up, but I want to say sincerely, sincerely to ESPN and people on Twitter, I apologize. <laughs> Thank you so much. I'm going to bring it up to that. <laughs> Artie Lang! Let's bring David Tell back up here, too. David Tell, where's Dave? Dave's here? Is Dave here? <laughs> My gut is out of control. <laughs> Let's leave this seat open for a reason. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you know you're gonna have a bad day when the first tweet, uh, the first text you get is from your mother, and it says, "I didn't know I raised a monster." <laughs> <laughs> well, hold on, Wait, did your mother send you that message? No. Uh, <laughs> you thought that was a real message? I thought it was hey, a real message. Keith I met his mother. I met his mother. Yeah, Keith, Keith, Robinson. Robinson. Get, up there, Keith get up here. Keith Robinson. Here Keith this Robinson. is. This is. Now, Keith, you Keith. Keith. Jefferson. So how did you? Feel? <laughs> <laughs> High school weather. <laughs> Hey, man. <laughs> Y'all give it up for sure, Keith Robinson. Sure. Clap for Keith. That's great. See? It's the Race See? Wars podcast live show. Hey, man. <laughs> I apologize. You ain't the only Stop one that fucked up. Stop He's standing in front of Dave. You're the only one that fucked up in there. Michael Che fucked up. Okay. The animal. We got fucked oh, up Oh, and Mike, there. Mike was talking right. about the cat curl. Hey, the cat call well, kid. Well, everybody, yeah. everybody's in trouble, man. They're out there with their little <laughs> typing. They're <laughs> typing. You said something offensive. Mike, are you not allowed to talk about it no more? Can Come up here, Mike. Yeah. Mike, get up here. <laughs> I mean, risk your whole career. What, what about I, Hannibal? Hannibal's here, here too. Yeah. He called Cosby a rapist. What the fuck is that about? Yeah, that's a controversy. Yeah, wait a minute. He said Cosby shit on his face. Did you hear that? <laughs> wow. He said Cosby shit on his face. Wait a minute. I want to make a no, point. No, he said he shit Jello pudding on his face. <laughs> <laughs> that ain't Huxtable like. That ain't a Huxtable. Cosby actually raped women. <laughs> All right. Yeah. Allegedly. Got, allegedly. Got, somebody. <laughs> can I? I wait for a cease and desist from. <laughs> can I? Can I say one? Can I say one thing uh, about this? This is probably. This is so far. This is the ultimate New York City comedy festival show right now that you're seeing. So thank you. This is it. Honestly. Race what podcast live show? This is yes. We went from podcast to proudcast on this one. <laughs> And if I could, if I could interject, because I, I know you brought up the Holla back video. You, you brought that up. Yeah. Yes. I was in that video. You were? I was cut out. I was the guy. I asked the woman to help me put my kayak on my Prius. And uh, <laughs> she... I was the guy. I, I just wore a bandana and I yelled out Brooklyn every seven seconds. <laughs> I didn't see any more. That video was really, I think, you know. The cat call video? Yeah, not well, well, they didn't go to fucking Bedford Avenue. They kind of calculated where they sent this big ass, big titted bro. <laughs> wow. <laughs> They needed a specific I'll be honest with you. Get it. I, I, I'll be honest. I thought it was Rachel Feinstein. I thought it was Rachel. Uh, <laughs> Construction guys got close. She's my roommate. I can say it. Am I Lena Dunham? 
Clean-up costume. I got cat claws. <laughs> <laughs> what is your clean up costume? Just a shirt on top like Porky Pig? <laughs> wow. I'm wearing it. I'm Holy shit. <laughs> Tell me that show should have been uh, not titled Girls in a question mark. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good one. Right. So we'll come back to Barbie and Works and anyway, ESPN show. I'm good. I'm live. Everybody gets catcalled. That's right. I got catcalled. The tranny's always catcalled. Do they? Yeah. Hey, Tommy. 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 Hey,
she went to Stephen A. Smith, so there's the sex symbol of it. Well, he's he had conver- the controversy too. He uh, he did with the Ray yeah. Rice thing. That's Ray Rice. Oh, that's right. He what said Ray Rice, a wife deserved what she got <laughs> for pushing all the buttons on the elevator. And he's still uh, working. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Thank you, Crowder. I don't know, there guys. I don't know. Thank don't you. Know. Don't waste my time, bitch. Don't waste my time. How, t- how about Stephen, Stephen A. Tyler? Love in an elevator. <laughs> Keep it up while I'm going down. It's nice. Now, where do you stand on racist Halloween costumes? <laughs> where do I stand on yeah. Halloween Let's get to the bottom of this, Artie. Let's get to the bottom. What? I wore some guy in a ninja outfit this year. <laughs> and people act like it's an uh, appropriation. My cousin it. worked hard as Mel Gibson, man. <laughs> <laughs> well, what's a racist? Oh, what's a oh racist? you mean a costume of a racist? Yeah, I meant what, like. What's a racist? Uh, like a Any uh, uh, costume where uh, Dan's uh, working? Maybe. <laughs> <laughs> <No. laughs> <laughs> you dress up like uh, like a geisha or something. That's racist. That's racist? Yeah. Yeah, you don't understand these Twitter kids. Racist is, Unless you're Mark is intent. Whoa. 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 Hey, watch your fucking mouth. Whoa, front Thank row. You. Holy shit. <laughs> what was great. that, front row? So you're saying, by the way, this is Jeff Ross. You're saying it's costume. <laughs> I'm Jeff Ross. <laughs> costume is racist. Blackface is not necessarily racist. It's Thank you, Mike. I, see, I thought blackface was if you leave, like, the fucking space and shit. Like, yeah, no, not like not, if you're doing an impression or it's something. It's not necessarily blackface. It's the red lips that bother me. Don't dress up in red lips. I think the accompanied voice can be off-putting, too. Like, hello there. Do you have some gummy bears? <laughs> How do we do? Who's that fucking guy, uh, Schwartz, Schwartz P? In, uh, in Holland Christmas? They got the oh, yes. Holland Santa's has a whole ritual about do you know some black. Santa's assistant. His assistant comes down the, the chimney. He's not in black face. He is in black fucking face. No, it's the soot. Santa? Hey, it's the soot from the chimney. They say that it's the soot because they don't want to see a black man working. It's a black dude. He makes his hair curly and his lips really red. <laughs> It's the most racist Christmas story, but you know what? But it's, it's Holland. Sweet. It's sweet. I mean, come on. It's still Christmas. It's yeah, still, Christmas. still Christmas. The chimney is bro alive. He comes out of Cedric the Entertainer. <laughs> <laughs> Can't Jesus have what he wants for his birthday, guys? But it's it's Holland, right? Yeah, it's yes. Holland. Yeah, there's like, Holland has like two more black people than Madison, Wisconsin. So, I mean, really, <laughs> they have no idea what you're talking about. Pierre and Henry. I know those two black <laughs> I, uh, well, Wait a minute. Why don't anybody ever pay attention to racism towards Latin people? Okay, Why you, it wait, gotta be black? Pre- wait, wait, bro- wait, brother. Preach. Wow. Huh? Why, That's man? That's great. Talk about it, nigga. Huh? Talk about it, motherfucker. I'm trying to talk about it, brother. I think, uh, I think Mexicans get all that attention, you know? <laughs> you think so? Yeah, Mexicans yeah. are the main, like, oppressed Latin. Well, they're the number one, but number two, I think, is Puerto Ricans. Yeah. Only in New York. Uh, only in New York. I'll tell you what. I don't know what. I only see Dominicans now, and I don't know what the fuck you did to the Puerto Ricans. But uh, I haven't seen a Puerto Rican in five years. Uh, because you help. <laughs> They're all on the Mets. Because you heliport yourself out of the city when it's the Puerto Rican Day Parade. That's true. Heliport out. Uh, Hannibal, you want to come up or no? Hannibal, come on up here. Black Hannibal. man. Hannibal, please. Oh, fucking black man. Get up here, Hannibal. Get up here. Who? Oh. Who? And explain yourself. Listen, you should explain yourself. I think we had a great show tonight. Do you think you had a great show? Is Hannibal coming up? I said I think we had a great just, show tonight. Do you think we had a great show? Can I? Dave. Dave, please. Talk. Can I say something? Dave talk. Can I say something? Yes. We're at that tipping point now where we're like one urban away from me moving to a wider podcast. All right. I'm just saying right now, I'm doing it for the schools. I'm doing it for the schools. <laughs> the Comedy Central podcast. I have a friend. I have a friend who's not me. Okay. Who has a pipe in the backseat of his Range Rover. And he calls a Puerto Rican be good stick. Is that right? Oh, come on. Enough about Nick the Pop. First of all, that's my Range Rover. That's funny. And I take offense to that. I was pointing to my penis. Um, all right, so what's the closing? Uh... Race Wars podcast. If you don't listen to Race Wars podcast, listen. iTunes, SoundCloud, you motherfuckers. 
It's my weed money. Yeah. Will you listen? Will you fucking subscribe? Did we sponsor, by the way? Yes, yes. First of all, if Hannibal comes up here, we can beat the Knicks. <laughs> that was a black joke. Can I? Don't forget about Square. What? Yeah. Squarespace. Uh, Squarespace. Dave, get in here. Get in here. Dave uh, hates pictures. Yeah, I hate. What are you taking this? Is this for the N NSA? What are you doing? <laughs> Mike, send me this. Send me this. Squeeze okay, it. Squeeze. Squeeze more. Squeeze. Dave, go in the front. Dave, go in the front. Dave, go in the front. Put, Dave, put put in the front, Dave. All right. Put that white lens on. It's like Get in here, Will. Get in here. This is like. Squeeze it. This looks like 38 special meets boys to men. This is a weird iTunes. Did you get it? Dollar nut download. Cool. Thank you for coming out tonight, yeah, Village Underground. I got it. Race thank you guys for having us. Race Wars podcast. iTunes, SoundCloud. It's a movement. It's a movement, man. It's a movement. We all we got top two percent. Thank you, everybody. David Tell, Artie Lang, Mike Shea. Will, Keith Robinson, Kurt Metzger, Hannibal, thank you, Hannibal. Hannibal, Kareem Green, Caitlin Bailey. Holy shit, this is the best show of the New York Comedy Festival. Make some noise! Make some noise! Thank you, God bless. Good night, motherfuckers! Race Wars, Race Wars, Race Wars podcast, Race Wars podcast.